Chingida, Tangyoda, Tangyokada, Chingida. Like, I already think I already said Changi. <laughs> Can I say Korean? I don't even know. Annyeonghaseyu, annyeonghaseyu, hey you. It's Italia, and welcome back to the channel. This it's best to encourage you to believe in your ability to learn Korean. So, today I want to talk to you about the top six things that I wish I knew before I started my journey to Korean fluency because. I really feel like I would have had an easier time if I had just known this. But uh, you know what? It's fine. You'll know and you'll have an easier time than I did. So yeah, let's jump into the video. Go, go. Starting off with number six, I wish someone had prepared me for the fact that things can get really, really awkward, really, really fast when you don't know someone's name or worse, when you don't know their position or even worse, 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 when you don't remember because <laughs> now you can't ask them but that was just Okay, so if you're unaware, it's uncommon to use the word you in Korean. It's like the word that you use towards your close friends when you're like, mm, 나 오늘 떡볶이 먹을래. 넌? 아, 왜 그래? 떡볶이 먹자. Like, it's like close friends or when you're trying to do a good, get like into a fight, like, 너 뭐라고 했어? Like, like, like that. So, mm, I just don't, yeah. And I know like the, there are some textbooks that teach 당신 as the polite way of saying you and technically they're not wrong, <laughs> but also don't use it because again, it can be offensive and a fighting word. So just, you don't use it. So usually when you're trying to address someone or call out to them like, hey, so-and-so, you want to order some chicken? You, you have to use their name followed by a title or like a position of some sort. So maybe on the oppa or if they're below, like younger than you, or what you're not close enough to call them any of those things or something, you would use she. Right? And if it's not that kind of situation, you would call them like Sonseng name or Shijang name or something like that, right? But when you don't know their name, you can't put she, which is the one you use when they don't have a title. And if you don't know their position, you can't just be like, now it's just awkward. And you have to hope that they make eye contact with you and you'd be like, copy. I think I just said nosebleed. Great. <laughs> Do you want to order some coffee? <laughs> you know, you have to like make eye contact and it's so awkward because I found myself in this position so many times when I was at church, right? I would meet all these people that were around my age but older than me and they would tell me their names and I would forget by the next Sunday when I saw them and I didn't feel comfortable calling them Anni or Opa because I don't know them but then I don't know their names either so I'd, I would literally sit there being like and I would be eavesdropping I was like the queen of eavesdropping and like I was waiting for somebody to say their name so I could be like okay that one is Hyung and that's her name <laughs> and I like write it down on my phone and I'd be like okay Hyung has dyed hair and glasses that way the next time I saw her I could be like oh Hyung she like I could address them because I didn't want to be rude I'm sorry, that was like a rant because I got really stressed really fast. <laughs> Number five, there are so many Korean words that will be translated into one or two words in English. And it makes it really difficult because they're all different in Korean. They're not the same. You can't interchange them. They are not substitutable, okay? So for example, um, in English, we say you bring something, you carry something, or you take something. Just three words. Just three words that we use in everyday conversations to express this idea of movement, right? But in Korean, there's like six or seven words that I can think of off the top of my head that are used in everyday conversation that are used to mean to bring, to carry, or to take. Shall we begin? 들다, 챙기다, 가져오다, 가져가다, 데려가다, 데리다. Oh, oh yeah, and there's 잡다. And like I said, don't forget they're all different and they have their own things or times when you use them. Some mean you're bringing or taking an object, some mean you're bringing or taking a person, and one means this on the job means you're only talking about the hand. You can't use it to mean you took some milk home or something. Like they're they're all different. So good luck with that. Number four, like Korean words, Korean grammar has a lot of structures that all mean the same thing in English. Oh, and don't forget, you can't substitute them for each other because they all have a different feeling. And if you try to substitute them with each other, it's wrong. Or you said something completely different from what you done thought you said, okay? So for example, in English, we say the word because. Because something, something, or since something, something, or 
Uh, what's the other way? Do to something. Something. So we have three. We have three. But in Korean, there's like four, five, maybe even six structures that can be used as the word because. Shall I educate you? Yes, I think I shall. Now, because there are so many, I cannot tell you them off the top of my head, so I have them here listed out for me to read to you. Also, inika, demone, tokbone, godun. When you have none, momo, demonida, nurago, nim parame, il tenika. And those are the only ones that I could remember while writing this script. There are probably more. So, know that when you start learning Korean, you can't, you have to learn a lot of grammar and you gotta learn it well. Number three might be a little shocking because you are often told when you start learning Korean, oh, Korean is pronounced the way it is spelled. That is a big fat lie, okay? That is a big fat lie. There are so many hatim changes or just like sounds, pronunciation rules that you need to be aware of that you are not gonna see, okay? You're not gonna see it when you're looking at the written word because it's different. For example, so hangummai. Hangummai means Korean language. You probably know this word if you've started learning Korean, but let me tell you, it's not hangummai. The guk, the gyok at the bottom, forget that. Toss it out. It's not a gyok anymore. It's an yung. It is an yung, so it's hanggung mai. Hanggung mai. Okay, like, because the miam, the mai part, the miam, the m sound, right? It changes the gyok to an ng sound. Hanggung mai. Not hanggung mai. No, no, no. No, friend. No, 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 no. Okay? And then there's times where the. And, like, I, I can't even express to you how many times the bottom consonant will change depending on what like syllable or what letter follows it. Number two, formal and casual language are not as easy as adding yo to the end of your sentences. No, 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 friend, no. So when I first started learning Korean, I really thought there were only three levels. I thought it was a, ya, Yo and umnidanika, so just three. I was like, yeah, three. That's a lot. But like, I can learn it. No, 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 no. So actually, there's like closer to six or seven levels, <laughs> and it doesn't end there. It's not just adding things to the end of your sentences. No, no, no. There are special particles you have to use when you're trying to be respectful. Okay. There are like, oh my gosh, there are different words depending on who you're talking to. So there's mokta. I think this is a pretty common one, but like mokta, right to eat. If you're talking about someone or to someone that is older than you of like some superior level of ranking and stuff, it's dishta, the completely different word, dishta. For example, my house is a chip, but if I'm talking about my grandma's house, like she's like, wow, right? Cause she's grandma. So she has, she doesn't have a chip. She has a take, okay? And like, these are just some basic examples. Like it gets so much more complicated. Oh my gosh, because it's not just like, oh, you have to know the language. It's like, you have to know the culture too, in order to use it correctly. And I found myself so confused all the time because I will say, I'll add the she particle to something and I'll use it to someone that I apparently I'm not supposed to be using it to, okay? Or, or like if I have made a friend and we started our friendship in English, when we switch to Korean, sometimes I'm like, okay, do I start off with the yo because I don't want to be rude? But also if I use a yo for that it could be rude Does that make sense like either I am too rude because I'm not being polite and I'm not using the yo or I could be too rude Because I'm putting a wall between us because I used yo when when to them we have a really close friendship So I should have started off with just pamai because we've been friends already. What the heck is going on? So yeah, no, I get really stressed Now moving on to the number one thing that I wish I knew before I started learning Korean. Are you ready? Living in Korea doesn't mean you'll become fluent. I know. So when I first went to Korea to study abroad, I really thought that I was gonna come back like, I speak such good Korean. Like I really thought that I was gonna be able to have conversations with no problem. You know, I didn't think I was gonna be like fluent fluent, but I had an idea that I would be conversational. I did not come back conversational. So basically what I have learned is that just because you move to Korea doesn't mean you'll be using Korean. Doesn't mean you'll get better at Korean. You can literally 
move to Korea and only speak English and be fine. I, uh, there's so many, and there's so many different reasons for this. Uh, for example, when I went, I was surrounded by Koreans that spoke amazing English. Amazing, amazing English. So even though I was in the countryside where nobody else spoke English, the people that were my roommates, the people that I was seeing in class, like they all spoke English. Even if it wasn't like, wow, fantastic English, they spoke English better than I spoke Korean. So all of my relationships were in English with the exception of like my church. But like everyone I hung out with was speaking in English. My international friends, English, obviously. And like my Korean friends, English. So for me, like I know, it just, no, it didn't happen. There's so many ways to not become fluent. It's just, it's not gonna happen just because you're there. You're still gonna have to put in a lot of effort. You're still gonna have to go and try and like make those friends that don't speak English so you can practice. <laughs> like there's so many people in Korea that speak good English to where if they hear you struggling in Korean, they'll just switch to English. They'll be like, oh, how can I help you? What are you looking for? Do you need help with directions? Like they will just come up to you and bless their souls. You never know when you're gonna need a person like that, but like it makes it really hard to like just pick up Korean by living in Korea, if that makes sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed hearing my six little mini rants and if you're starting your journey in learning Korean You can check out this video down here where I give you some tips on how to start learning Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. So tell me about you guys. Bye